In this episode, we will be covering the Covina Massacre, which took place on December 24th in 2008 by Bruce Bruce Jeffrey Pardo was born and raised in San Fernando Valley, California. After graduating John A. Trances Polytechnic High School, he moved on to Cal State, where he studied computer and science. Bruce was undeniably bright. And in 1988, he landed a job at the Jet Propulsion Lab as a software engineer. But due to hacking and stealing other employees' private info, such as salary and personal information, he was fired and unable to collect unemployment. In 1988, Pardo, still living with his mother, became engaged to a co-worker named Delia. However... They planned to marry in 1989, and Pardo was a runaway groom, leaving his bride-to-be, along with his entire family, at the altar, stealing $3,000 out of their joint account and was vacationing in Palm Springs. As one would imagine, the relationship was over. Marriage never took place. After 10 years later, he finally met a nice woman named Eleanor. They had a baby named Matthew. In 2001, it was just a week into the new year when tragedy struck while Eleanor had some errands to run. She had left Matthew with Pardo and came home to Pardo in the driveway with Matthew in his hands soaking wet, screaming, he drowned, he drowned. The child was in the hospital for, and after one week of extensive medical treatment, doctors told Bruce and Eleanor Matthew would never fully recover, which eventually led to Bardo's split. He left, never to see his brain-damaged, paraplegic son again. Even Eleanor and Matthew behind, it was a few years later, back in 2004, when he meets Sylvia through Sylvia's brother-in-law, and they also all worked together. Bruce and Sylvia were a definite hit, connected from the start, They were truly in love. The couple married in January 2006, and Bruce purchased a three-bedroom home for $565,000 in Monroe, California. The couple maintained a very happy life, active in church, where Pardo volunteered as an usher. After a few years of struggling, April 2008, the final blow would come when Pardo's mother Nancy revealed to Sylvia about Pardo's paraplegic son and how he has never seen him since the accident. Sylvia, the loving mother that she was, was disgusted and filed for a divorce. Pardo wanted no part of Sylvia's three children that were not his and was very sad about the divorce and to learn his mother betrayed him. So here's where the plot of the murder begins. Pardo drives to Burbank and purchases his first weapon in June, followed by his second weapon in July. The third in August, and the last being October, along with November, he ordered his Santa suit custom to his size and would a Here's something I found while researching. A month before the murders, his mother's house went on fire. And they say that could have been what triggered him. I don't Backyard believe so. shed. A week before Christmas, in a hearing room on the second floor of the Burbank Courthouse, the marriage of Bruce Pardo and Sylvia Orza was officially terminated. The cause? Irreconcilable differences. It was Christmas Eve at 11.30 when Bruce Jeffrey Pardo, dressed as Santa, knocked on the door of his former's in-law's home. Occupied with about 25 to 30 people, he had a gift wrap package containing a homemade theme thrower and two 9mm semi-automatic handguns, and they found two additional handguns in his possession. Moments later, the door opened and Pardo left out a shot, shooting eight-year-old niece Katerina 
the daughter of Leticia, which is Sylvie's sister, in the face as she ran to greet him, injuring her. He then fired into the crowd, fleet over and over. It's speculated that he may have stood over and pointed some of them and executed them point blank. After the shooting, Pardo unwrapped the package containing the homemade flamethrower and used it to spray racing fuel, gasoline, and set the home ablaze. Nine people died, either from gunshot wounds or the flames itself. One 17-year-old, the youngest to die, which was Sylvia's nephew, was upstairs on a computer. It is believed that he succumbed to the smoke. A 16-year-old girl was shot and wounded in the back, and a 21-year-old woman who jumped from the second story broke her ankle. Many were survived because they were in the backyard by the pool. Come on, Paul. Hi. Come on, Santa suit melted onto his skin, causing third degree burns. Cops later found him at his brother's house with a single gunshot wound to the head, with $17,000 strapped to his legs and plane tickets to Canada. When police arrived at Pardo's brother's house, they found his car parked away and it was rigged to be blown up. Cops had to purposely blow it up in order to make the neighborhood safe. As they entered Pardo's brother's home, they found tons of ammunition, fake bombs, and so on, hidden way back, tucked under his bed and in his room. They found Pardo with a single gunshot wound to his head, dead on his brother's kitchen floor. His brother Brad was no, not living in the home at the time. Uh, as of today, there have been nine bodies found inside the residence. There was a family party being held at the residence on Millcrest. Mr. Pardo drove to the location and he was dressed in a Santa suit. He gained entrance. He immediately was confronted with an eight-year-old child who thought uh, Santa Claus had come to the house. He shot her once in the face and proceeded inside the residence. Police and coroners located the last of the bodies this morning. Police say Bruce Pardo dressed up in a Santa suit and went to the home of his ex-wife's parents. James and Alicia Ortega, where they were having their annual family Christmas party. There, he began shooting. Then he opened a gift-wrapped package, a pressurized tank that police say Pardo had rigged up to blast a mixture of race car fuel all over the house. Sylvia's three children escaped unharmed. This is just another census case of somebody that doesn't want to pay divorce. Sad. Um, to the victim is really, really terrible. You could pause right here, see the list. Um, the good thing is Sylvia's children did make it out. The eight-year-old survived. Sixteen-year-old survived. And um, a lot more that were in the pool. And by the pool in the backyard. Or it could have been worse, but, you know, I think... Nine people who's their life from maniac is more than enough. It's just got to stop. If you're familiar with this case, please leave me a comment below. Um, you know, it's one of those that will always stick in my mind now that I found it. Thanks for coming. Please like, subscribe, and share.